This is why you do the southwest coast path to stumble across beaches like this. Apparently this section we're about to do is one of the toughest along this bit of coastline. We have just made it to Land's End. Just after we left Land's End, a storm hit Cornwall. We had 50 mile an hour winds that were just battering the tent and we just weren't sure if this tiny little tent was gonna hold up under that kind of sustained pressure. We've just left our campsite and reconnected with the coast path again. Today is another 13-ish mile day from Treen, where our campsite is, to Botolac. It looks like it's going to be another day similar to yesterday walking through these overgrown pathways. One cool thing about the section of the route we're doing today though is we're going to pass Land's End, which is the most westerly point of England. I have a new favourite beach. That down there is Porthcurno Beach. And just around the corner is the Minac Theatre, which we're going to see next. This is why you do the southwest coast path, to stumble across beaches like this. We've been walking a couple of hours now since Porth Kerno, and those dense, ferny paths have been replaced by these rocky cliffs. This has been my favourite stretch of the walk over the last couple of days. These granite cliffs just look incredible. And also, this area is famous for chuffs, which is a type of seabird that Amy is really excited to see. So we're really hoping that we get to see them. For the last 10 miles or so, we haven't been able to see anything over the ferns. So it's nice to be above the cliffs again. This is the Cornwall that I came here to see. It's incredible how quickly the terrain can change here. In just a mile, it's gone from being really green and overgrown to here, it's just way more sparse and rocky and just covered in heather. It's gonna take this guy ages to do the southwest coast path. <laughs> so we're gonna follow this path around for a few more miles until we reach Land's End, which is in the distance. We've seen two chuffs. <laughs> They're in the cliffside just here. It's those two black birds there. You know that they're chuffs because they've got bright red beaks. Apparently they're not a seabird. They are a corvid, so a member of the magpie and crow family. Amy just wanted to correct me. <laughs> we managed to see three chuffs, I think. So that's another one ticked off our wildlife list. We have just made it to Land's End. So we've walked from the most southerly point of England to the most westerly. 
in four and a half days. It's about 1 p.m. now, so we are gonna stop here for lunch. It's now the next day here in Cornwall, and we are currently in our campsite in Botolac. Yesterday turned out to be one of the toughest days we've ever had hiking. Just after we left Land's End, a storm hit Cornwall, and for the next few hours, we were trudging through the rain and we got completely drenched. By the time we arrived at our campsite, we were soaked through and all we wanted to do was get into our tent and warm up and go to sleep. But during the night, the worst of the storm hit us and from around 9 p.m. until about 7 a.m., we had 50 mile an hour winds that were just battering the tent and we just weren't sure if this tiny little tent was gonna hold up under that kind of sustained pressure. A lot of the tents around us didn't actually make it through the night. Some of them got blown down, some of the people just gave up, got in their cars and went home. But fortunately, this little tent managed to survive the night. You can see that we're still at the tail end of the storm here. I think it's about 40 mile an hour winds at the moment. But we've packed up now and we're ready to get on with the last stage of this hike. This is our sixth day on the southwest coast path and we're going to be walking from our campsite here in Botolac to St Ives where we're going to be finishing this walk. I think it's about 15 miles in total which will be our longest stretch so far. just joined back up with the coast path and this section of the walk takes us through an area of Cornwall that's particularly famous for its mining industry. So we're walking past all of these old buildings and abandoned bits of equipment from its tin mining days. It's so cool to see all these old remnants of this old Cornish industry. It's still super windy this morning though. me here is called the Levant Mine and apparently back when it was operational the mine shafts used to go down and then one and a half kilometers out to sea where the miners would mine copper and tin. running down the cliffs is due to either the copper or the tin that's in the rocks. So that's either tin oxide or copper oxide. I'm not quite sure which one. But yeah, as it reacts with the water, it oxidizes and makes that bright color. I just managed to spot a seal out there in the waves, just bobbing around on its own. I don't know if I managed to catch it on camera, but it was down there getting bashed around by the waves. Apparently that beach behind me down there is a really good spot to see seals during pupping season. But there's none down there at the moment, so I'm assuming we're not in pupping season. But that is another one for the wildlife list. Just completed this really tough climb behind us and this is the view that we're treated to. You can see over there that's the path that we took and this stretch of the hike has had a lot of sections like that where we follow the cove down to sea level and then climb back up on the other side. It's really tough work but you get views like this.
we've just passed the halfway point for the walk today. So we found a secluded spot by the edge of the path and we're cooking up some lunch. There's a kestrel up there on top of this ruined building. We're now approaching the final five miles of this hike. We've just passed through the town of Zena. We're staying in an Airbnb tonight as a treat after five nights sleeping in a tent. It'll also be really nice to sleep in a bed after getting no sleep last night due to the storm. As soon as we arrive in St Ives, the first thing I'm gonna want is a shower and then I need a beer. <laughs> Apparently this section we're about to do is one of the toughest along this bit of coastline. It's supposed to have a lot of clambering over rocks, which is gonna be even tougher with these bags on. But it's the final five miles, so we're gonna push through it. I think this must be the bit that we've been warned about. It looks like we're going to have to scramble over these rocks. That wasn't actually too bad. I imagine it's a lot tougher in the opposite direction. We're now coming up to another steep climb, which has become very familiar on this hike. Today's actually been the perfect weather for hiking. It's not been too hot. We've not had any rain. It makes such a nice end to our trip. Our Airbnb is actually in the town of St Ives. So we're gonna leave the coastal path just after a point called Hoar Point. That's H-O-R, Hoar. And that's just coming up in front of us now, which means we don't have long left on the path. Right, that's it then. 70 plus miles later, and we're just about to leave the southwest coast path. Just as the sun is starting to set behind me, it's been an exhausting final day on the path today, and I'm very excited for my beer. We've done it. We've made it to our Airbnb in St. Ives, and I am exhausted, so I think I'm going to catch you tomorrow and fill you in properly on the details of the walk. Right, one final look at the map. This is where we started yesterday, at our campsite in Treen. And this was actually my favourite campsite that we stayed in for this trip. So we took this path down to the coast, down to Porth Kerno, and we followed it around past the Minak Theatre, which is here. And we actually couldn't get into the Minak Theatre without paying, so we didn't actually get to see that. So we just followed the coast around until we reached Land's End up here. And this is when the weather really changed. So this entire section here, we were walking in torrential downpour. So by the time we reached our campsite here in Botolac, we were completely drenched. But then this morning, we woke up in Botolac just as the storm was dying down and then we set off for our longest day so far. This section here is where all the old mining equipment was and that was a really interesting bit of coastline. And then once we passed that section we reached this really long stretch that was just in and out of these coves. So we'd walk around the headland, back into the cove, around the next headland, into another cove. We followed this for several hours until we finally reached Hoare Point, which is where we turned off and headed into St Ives. And right here is where our Airbnb is. And as you can see, we are right next to St Ives Bay. 
Now this was our longest day so far. This whole section here was about 18 miles in total. So by far our longest day. And if you look at the map as a whole, you can actually see from here all the way around to here, that is where we've walked over the last two days, right around the western tip of Cornwall. Now that I've had a chance to rest and reflect on the last six days, I thought I would do a proper overview of this walk. According to Amy's Garmin watch, we did over 80 miles in six days from Lizard Point to St Ives, which is around 13 miles more than I initially predicted. But that does include all of our detours to our campsites, as well as a couple of times where we lost the path and got lost a little bit. <laughs> but the thing that really did surprise me is how much elevation we ended up doing. In total, we ended up doing around 3,500 metres of elevation over six days, which is the equivalent of walking up Ben Nevis two and a half times. So that's a lot of elevation. And I think that's what made this hike a lot more challenging than I originally thought it was going to be. Normally we can do 20, 25 mile days and we're fine. But doing this walk, we were both done by about mile 10. So it was definitely a lot more physically challenging than any other walk that we've done before. And the other thing that made it really tough was the terrain. A lot of that path was really overgrown and at times it felt like I needed a machete just to cut my way through. But the whole point of this was to challenge ourselves. It's the first through hike we've ever done and it's probably one of the toughest ones we could have chosen to start with. I don't know if I would recommend this hike to first time through hikers. We both are fairly experienced day hikers and we found it really tough. I would probably suggest doing two or three days on this at the most just to get a feel for it before going all out for 80 miles. <laughs> and I know that some people have walked the entire 600 mile length of it, so I have a lot of admiration for them. The best thing about this walk though was the amazing places that we discovered just because we happened to be walking past them. These amazing little villages and beautiful beaches that maybe we never would have considered going to now I think we're probably going to go back to a lot of them. So that is the end of this Southwest Coast Path series, which is really hard to say. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed following us along. As you can see, we are not experienced through hikers. We are learning as we go along, and hopefully the more trips we do, the better we'll get at it. But if you do have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to try and answer them. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.